First of all, I want to thank everyone to be here today. I don't know if I'm nervous or if I'm just excited <laughs> because today I am alongside Anna. I am the co-coordinator of Wiki Editoras LX, uh, but I also work for Arts and Feminism as a, as a regional ambassador for Europe and the North of Africa. So I'm very happy to to be here doing this collaboration, to do this partnership. It's a, it's a big thing for me, I'm very happy. Um, so my name is Flavia Doria. I am Brazilian, but I live here in Portugal for seven years now. I start editing on Wikipedia in the beginning of 2020. And I start editing with Wiki Editores LX. The group already existed for one year uh, before I came in. Uh, and after that, I already worked for the um, Wikimedia Foundation and I was involved in another project. And we are going to do our five years. We're going to have our five, five years anniversary this year with Wikiditores. And that's all about me. I will ask Anna to introduce herself and then I talk again. <laughs> Thank you, Flavia. Thank you, Nina. And thank you, Art and Feminism, for this opportunity. Uh, we're very excited, very excited to be here. I'm also a bit nervous, but I think it's part of the process. Um, and yes, OK, so my name is Anna Bregensa. I'm my, my pronouns are um, she, her. I'm based in Lisbon. I'm Portuguese, um, but I'm actually from the north of the country, from Porto. And uh, in, I started editing in 2019 um, during an event organized by Tila Capelletto from, uh, during the uh, Feminist Festival here in Lisbon. And uh, I liked it so much that in the moment I proposed to Tila, okay, we need to continue doing this, you know? And uh, we need to continue meeting and editing because this is just too exciting and um, to be, you know, fighting wiki gaps and it's just too amazing. So we need to continue doing it. And that's, um, you know, how the group started to, the, 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 little, the, the, the little start of the group was there. And then of course, uh, the group only really had a, a meaning when more people joined and, uh, and uh, during 2019, 2020, um, the group really, increased a lot, Flavia joined, and we we gather capacity to really start, you know, uh, organizing in, in more and more uh, interesting ways and to contribute for the Lusophone um, community in Wikipedia. So I think that's it for me. And uh, I'll pass back to Flavia so she can continue the presentation and uh, I'll come back to you a few slides later. Thanks, Anna. Um, I'm going to share here on the chat um, the document where we have some information. I don't know if we shared this already. I think we didn't. Um, and I'm going to to share my own screen. I don't know if Jude or Nina prefer in another way, but I'm going to start sharing so I can share the presentation with you all. Yes, I have that. So let me... So I hope, can we all see this? I think it will be nice to have some thumbs up here. Yes, thank you. Um, so we're calling this uh, presentation uh, Collective Editing. And I'm going to explain this a little bit further, but this is um, a very good way to express what we do in Wiki Editores and She's. And here I put some small agenda of how this this day is going to be for us. Um, I'm going to present our group to explain a little better for you all who we are 
and how do we work we want to for us it's a very good opportunity to share exactly how how we make this work and we, we would like to share some strategies and some challenges that we have in our in our work and at the end we're going to have a practical moment a workshop moment where we're going to really do the editing and the translations of some pages that we selected. So here we are. <laughs> this is um this is a picture that we took um in one of our events. I think this editathon happened in 2021. We call it it. Um, it this was a, a partnership with Bantumen, and the idea was to visibilize um, some black people who were involved in a lot of different art projects. And Vanessa Sanchez, the one here in the middle, she was our curator, so she selected the list of articles that we edit. Uh, Nina already did a great presentation of the group, but I'm going to read this for you all. Um, so Wiki Editores LX are a Lusophone Wikimedia's user group committed to action based on feminist, and colonial, decolonial, anti-racist, and capacities and anti-discrimination values and principles that meet fortnightly since May 2019 in person and at Penasco in Lisbon. Penasco is a, an art cooperative that we have in Lisbon. And we also meet online since March 2020. Um, and since the beginning of uh, two, 2023, we are funded by the Wikimedia Foundation through the General Support Fund. So this year is our second funded year. So how do we work? Nina already talked a little bit about it. So we can divide our work in this two, two fronts. So one side we create and improve pages. We insert images, data related to cis women, trans and non-binary folks to promote equity. So we make this work focus on content to, to make Wikipedia uh, more equity and to contribute to more people underrepresented in the Wikimedia movement, being able to edit and increase their representation on this digital platform, reducing bias and promoting a more plural community because we believe um, there is a direct uh, relationship between who edits and the content itself. So we didn't want to focus on um, to fill these these gaps in Wikipedia without bringing these people, so for us it is very important that we keep pushing, um, we keep pushing these edges of uh, of equity to to make it more and more uh, inclusive. So, what is collective editing for us? because while we were working on this presentation, we understand that this concept could be read in different ways and could mean different things for different people. So we wanted to use our own words here. And for us, it's a process of creating a network of solidarity supported by a series of key practices uh, promoting the joint editing of pages, having community of practice for support and learnings, expand beyond our linguistic borders, and being in tune with the causes and concerns of society. So it's not uh, a, a monolithic, like a, a one-sided um, concept, but it's uh, a lot of different things that we do that makes our work very collective. Everything we do in a group is very collective. 
So we wanted to share with you what are the main challenges for us. I'm just open the chat. I'm sorry because I want to keep reading you all. Um, we wanted to share some challenges with you because I think it's really important to understand why we do what we do and also to explain why we do the way we do uh, to explain our strategies. We need to understand our challenges. Um, <clears throat> So here in the beginning, we talk about self-confidence. And this is something that is supported by data, is supported by research, and it's supported by history in general. Uh, but the more important, it's supported by our own experience, um, welcoming newcomers and what happens in our events when we edit exclusively with uh, women, cis and trans women, trans people, non-binary people, what happened when we're trying to bring these people to Wikipedia? So we started to see uh, the newcomers have, have a lot of um, self, they, they struggle with self-confidence and they feel intimidated by the editing platform's interface. And interface, I'm sorry. <laughs> So we're talking about the Wikipedia, but also Wikicommons, all the, the Wikimedia platforms. We feel that they are very, they can be very intimidated for a lot of people. And the relationship people have with technolo technologies, they, they are very different regarding their gender. Um, so we start to receiving these comments from these newcomers. And we also notice the this intimidation by occupying a space of power, such as the one of knowledge. We understand that knowledge is a space of, of, of power. We understand that what we're asking for people when they when they come to, to edit Wikipedia with us, we are asking them to feel confident enough to to create something uh, for an online Wikipedia. And that can be intimidated for some folks. And also um, the low tech competences, uh, self-consciousness, that doesn't mean that these people, that they don't have the competence. That, mean, that means that they feel this way um, because what happened in Wikipedia, it's that when when you open um, the tool for for create a new article, for edit a new article, to to do a translation, it can sometimes look like um, some people think it looks like uh, programming. Some people think it looks like very much the Wikipedia, the the internet in the beginning of the internet when when we really need some skills, some technologies, skills to, to create new things. And we think the aesthetics and the visuals of Wikipedia sometimes create this uh, intimidation in people. Also, uh, one of the most important things we face regards uh, notoriety policies. So of course, now I'm talking to, to the newcomers. So of course, Wikipedia, um, they have their own policies. Uh, when we are going to create a new article, uh, we need to follow some rules. <laughs> it's not exactly rules, but we have some policies to guide us in, in this editorial process because we have to choose uh, what's in and what's not inside Wikipedia. So when we're talking about biographies of cis women, trans and non-binary people, we often have their notoriety questioned. And this is uh, a gender issue. Uh, we also have this dominance of this hegemonic vision that exclude other geographies and contexts. So depending on uh, the geography of this person that we want to create a biography about, 
the concept of notoriety can be very, very questioned. And the only thing that actually explained this is this hegemonic vision. So if we're talking about the global south, south it's harder. If we're talking about uh, people outside the, the English language, it's difficult. So we have a lot of uh, things to, to talk about uh, notoriety. And another thing that is related to this is sources. And now again, with the with the newcomers, I everything that we we create, we edit, and we write on Wikipedia, we need references. Uh, all any bit of data we include in Wikipedia needs to be uh, in in another type of publications, in journals, in websites. And of course, these sources also uh, need to be reliable and they need to be in some way notorious as well. So the topics we work are made invisible in the media, especially in the mainstream media. So that makes difficult for us to have access to sources that are considered reliable by the community. And one thing about Wiki Editoras LX that I think sometimes it's different from other projects that work with gender issues is that uh, we, we create a lot of biographies of people who are still alive. Uh, so it's easier sometimes to to prove the notoriety of that woman, basically. <laughs> so it's it's even harder the work when this person is still alive and they're still uh, creating their career or whatever makes them um, relevant to be on Wikipedia. Um, also, we have, uh, as challenges, we have our own skills because our most experienced editors have less than five years of practice. And here I'm saying five years, the, the group existed only for five years. Of course, we have one or two um, editors who are more seasoned, who are more experienced. Uh, but the main experience, but the main editors in our group have less than five years of practice, which means that there are difficulties with very advanced technical issues. So what happens in in a editathon in an event when we are editing together? Sometimes something unexpected happens that might be too difficult for us to handle and we need to ask for help outside our own community. And that's why making partnerships with arts and feminism, making partnerships with other groups, it's so important for us because we learn together, we, we exchange these um, knowledges and skills. And another challenge, um, we're calling it hierarchy um, because on Wikipedia, um, we have different positions. Not everyone, it's just an editor. We have admins and we have bureaucrats. So these are positions uh, that work as filters. These people have different kinds of powers um, on Wikipedia. So none of the group's members hold these hierarchical positions, such as administrators or bureaucrats. Uh, so that makes things difficult for us sometimes. Um, and also there is a criteria for granting these statuses depending on imbalancing community consensus. And and also uh, a, a little bit more difficult topic, but this is something that is important to talk about. Harassment, uh, we avoid to use the word bullying because sometimes it's difficult to, to pinpoint what is bullying and what it's not. So we're here 
at the end of the day, we are talking about ha harassment and we need to talk about the fact that being a minority or editing about minorities make editors vulnerable to harassment within Wikipedia. And so this can take the form of constant reversions of an editor's work, of an editor's work, or the manipulation of nota notability rules and policies to eliminate an article. Um, these are the type. Hi, Miranda. These are the type of harassment that are more common on Wikipedia. It's not directed to a person, but their work. So now that we understand the context of, of the challenges we face, we can talk about how to overcome this, how, what are the strategies that we develop to, to keep going. <laughs> so the main strategy is that we edit together. Um, so this idea of editing uh, together, the, the collective editing, this is like an umbrella concept for everything that we do. We edit together because we promote space for shared presences, for shared presence, and because we edit in a network in constant communication and support. Um, we are all, all the time we are sharing, not only when we have these specific moments like today. We are in constant communications. Uh, we put ourselves uh, in a position where you can approach us, when where you can reach us to solve problems. <laughs> I love this picture. <laughs> um, here, uh, I did not translate this word. The word is acolimentum, and I try to explain this strategy. <laughs> Acolimento from, from Portuguese, this word means to give or receive refugee, shelter or protection. It's a word also used for welcoming, but I wanted to, to use the word acolimento because more than welcoming is to give or receive refuge. So I think it's a very special word, it's a very warm word. And this can be understanding uh, by uh, care practices, creating a safe space for socializing, for exchanging and working, and the integration of all those present, uh, the organizers, the trainers, the staff, the participants in an initial round conversation. So every time we hold an event, online or in presence, but of course, especially in presence, because we need to take care of the environment of the, we need to create a great space for everyone. And the way we need to do this is through care practices. It's through acolimento. It's very important for us to, to have this initial moment, to to get to know each other a little better, to talk about the safe space policies the, the same way Nina did it today. When we are in presence, we have more time to to explain that. Uh, me and Anna, we try to to tell everyone that we we are here for them to to talk about anything that made they feel uncomfortable. Uh, they can explain uh, if they they feel they are in a situation of harassment and we try to solve it. And also, we always assign two people, usually me and Anna, of course, but we try to assign two people for that because if Anna made something that made they, they uncomfortable, they can talk to me. And if I make something that made they feel uncomfortable, they can talk to Anna. So we put ourselves in also in this vulnerable position and so we can explain to them that it can happen to anyone and we can always talk about it. Another thing is our pedagogies. 
um, am I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. <laughs> I'm sorry if I am not, but from pedagogy. So the idea is it's very important for us, the systemization of knowledge and prior organization of work before the editing sessions. It's something that for us, it's, it can also be understood as a colimentum because we feel that if we are conf confident about our work, if we have support tools, then the participants can feel safe. So organizing our work pre um, prior, so all these um, organizing tools make them to feel comfortable because they feel they are in a controlled environment where they safe and they have something to hold on and to guide them during this process of learning. So also involving people in the learning process through, through practice and in a hands-on approach. Uh, we usually don't talk that much. I'm talking a lot today because I want to share more than practices today with you. I want to share this knowledge that we, we've been, you know, collecting uh, for five, for four or five years. And this is a great opportunity to share. So in our events, we don't talk that much. We are, we, we are hands-on approach because we feel that's the best way to learn. Another very, very important um, strategy for us, it's our partnerships. Here, I have a picture of Lolo Arziki. They are a films director, an artist, and they curated uh, Edithathon for us uh, call it trans narratives. Uh, it was a very beautiful moment last year during the summer. And it's a great way to explain what partnerships are for us, because for us, they make sense. Um, we need to have partnerships that make sense for us, that optimize our resources, that we are deeply aligned with our values. This is very important for us and also partnerships that multiply the impact of our work and complement our vision and mission, and partnerships where we support causes and we can make marginal knowledge visible, more visible. Uh, and, and what happened with our partnerships, it's that it helped us to fill our own gaps because we understand and we recognize that we are a small group of people. And also there is no group of people that will cover all, uh, all the knowledge in the world. So that's why we need to, to partners, to, to do partnerships, to bring what we might be missing in our vision. So this is very important for us. Uh, I think this is the last one, community involvement. We encourage participation in the Wikimedia community, uh, taking part in decision-making process, improving article proposed for the, les the lesson, for example, because we also want our editors to understand that the work goes beyond our events and our experiences that there is this gigantic uh, uh, worldwide community. There is Wikipedia, there is Wikicommons. So we want them also to feel free to do their own thing and to, if it, to, to edit um, not only when they are with us and also to have autonomy uh, in in this political process there is in Wikipedia when we are uh, discussing if an an article is should, should stay in Wikipedia or not when someone proposes an article for elimination if if someone revert 
a content. So we can always have this conversation in our spaces for for decision decision making. And building a peer to peer community of of practice because it's really important that we can share our skills, that we can share our knowledge. So we try to do that, not only with our partners, but also within our community. And <laughs> here I'm going to, to pass uh, the presentation for Anna, because she's going to give you um, a practical example that I hope that helps to to visualize better everything that I just say. <laughs> so now uh, it's on me to present this uh, exciting example on how all of this that Slavia um, presented uh, of our strategies uh, is actually materialized on on our daily uh, on our daily practice. Um, uh, every day and um of course these strategies they some of them were um you know born with a group in a way that we we inherited them from um tila that had already been uh, uh editing with patricio Gillo from wikisfera and a lot of her these strategies are, are, weren't developed by us initially. They were adapted by us during the, the experience of uh, putting the group together. Um, but some others emerged uh, along the way. And, um, and now they materialized on, I mean, not only on the formal moments that we have on the events, but on our daily community of practice. That was the last strategy that um, Flavia focused and I bring you um, this example of how these things just, you know, uh, are sometimes intertwined in our in our exchanges. Uh, that just happened super recently. It was like uh, I think this week or last week. Um, and and I think they they go through this goes through a lot of the the points that um, that show how we work together collectively. And so. Uh, so Lisbon, we have this huge and relevant um, Brazilian community. Um, and and uh, since 2017, they started to organize uh, the carnival here. So a huge parade, a lot of groups, blocos as they call, started to organize and, 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 and a lot of events take place in the city um, for four or, three, four or five days. And since the beginning, they have been having some issues with the with the municipality, some administrative bureaucratic issues, and and this year, and that's what I show in this slide. I have uh, uh, some prints of uh, news articles from from local and, and national newspapers, uh, where they show um, this uh, these titles um, that say in Portuguese that they're uh, having protests, um, that instead the this year, these groups are protesting uh, during Carnaval because um, they're, they're been having a lot of uh, initiative and bureaucratic constraints to organize these events. Um, and so one of our group members, one day this week, I'm trying to pass, okay, no. Came on our WhatsApp group that is our main, uh, you know, peer uh, support space, uh, said, okay, you know, on the sequence of this carnival celebration, I created the page of Colombina Clandestina. So in this slide, I have, you know, prints of our conversation, but where I erase the the identity of the people, so we are just focused on the contents, <laughs> and, and we preserve their anonymity. And 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 she comes and she says, "Okay, I created this page of one of the these carnival groups, the oldest one, uh, and the one that is um, creating the biggest event in in the um, in the city, and that has been praised by the media as well for that, and and having a lot of media coverage." 
Uh, and she says, okay, whoever can come and look, that would be nice to the page and I know revise. And you know, if you have photos also, please contribute. That would be very nice. And then a second person comes and says, wow, that's amazing. Uh, a lot of fire emojis. And then I'm gonna share it. I'm gonna share this, this uh, page. And then a third person comes and said, well, you know, I changed the info box and the name on commons has a, a, a mistake. There's an error. And then the first person comes and says, okay, where can you, can you correct that? I don't know where it is. Um, I cannot correct this mistake, uh, this error on the name. How, how can you do it? How do you do that? And then a fourth person comes, uh-huh. And so, well, the second person actually comes back and says, okay, he's, this is how you do it. And they share the, the link to the Commons support um, page where it explains how to change the file name. And, and then the next morning, so that was it. And then the next morning, a fourth person comes and shares all the pictures and shows all the pictures that uh, they, they have been taking during the, the festivities of this uh, this year. And of course, we were super excited and like one or two people, I was one of the people involved said, you know, just put it on commons. And this person says, well, I don't remember how you do it, if I ever knew actually. And and uh, and of course, they just uh, shared the prints of, you know, the button of upload on commons on how, and, the, and the link on how to do it. And the person was able to, to finally, you know, put them on the, on the, on the comments. And, and actually one of the pictures, you know, this kind of beautiful bubble, uh, uh, how do you say, syn synchronicities that happen, serendipity, I don't know. Uh, one of the people that were in this, this parade and that's uh, on the pictures is actually has been following us and had come to some of our events. So they are on the on the um, on our WhatsApp group and then they just react to saying, oh, my God, I'm on Wikipedia. Help. <laughs> and and they shared uh, on their on their own WhatsApp group of the of the group of the carnival group. And so on another app, we received this message saying, oh, thank you so much for doing the, the page. In case you want another reference, I actually did an academic article on the performance of the group in this uh, resident, residence of the prime minister, blah, blah, blah. So we ended up having from, you know, getting out of our bubble and getting, you know, another person to, to enter the sphere and bring us you know, this ref, this source we could work on to improve the page. And then this is how it ended. We have this beautiful page, all illustrated. And, and especially what we have is that, you know, it was done at so many hands because you can see here, one, two, three, four, five people from our group that you know, during two days, we're just contributing for this page to become a more solid uh, example uh, of the page, and to and and actually in the end, just beautiful, you know, because if you can go there, I didn't share the link, but if Flavia can share the link, uh, it's you can see that it's a really beautiful page, and we're very proud of you know producing this kind of content on on Wikipedia because it's just like the best example of how our collective action happens uh, in our practice. So this is it. And now let's, <laughs> let's put our hands to work.